It's no secret that Dragon Ball has had a lack of strong female characters since the very beginning. Despite Android 18 being basically the only notable one in Z, more recent years have done a lot to bring us more powerful female characters. And though Super has given us rivals like Khalifa and Kale, none have struck quite the same chord as Android 21. Designed by Akira Toriyama himself, 21 is an original character made for the game Dragon Ball Fighters. For her status as a non-canon character, she's grown a shockingly large crowd of supporters within the fandom. Both a powerful female fighter and a brilliant scientist with a mysterious dark side, Android 21 stood out within the Dragon Ball community. So much so that she's currently on her way toward becoming fully canonized, with an easter egg cameo in the most recent movie, Dragon Ball Super Superhero under the name Bomi, Dr. Juro's wife and mother to Android 16. With her recent canonization and Dragon Ball being the show that it is, it's natural to wonder just how strong Android 21 is, and where she fits into the Dragon Ball universe. Surprisingly, 21 has the potential to be one of the strongest Dragon Ball characters we've ever seen, giving even a post-tournament of power villain like Moro a run for his money. But where exactly does she fit in, and what makes her so strong? For that, we'll have to take a look at the story of Android 21. Android 21's story begins some time between the Universe 6 tournament and the arrival of Future Trunks. Mysterious waves are suppressing the power of fighters across the globe, and later we find out these waves are emitted from a machine created by Dr. Jiro. On top of this, evil clones created by the Red Ribbon Army are running rampant, causing trouble wherever they can. Android 21 enlists the help of Android 16, 17, and 18 to clear out the clones, though they're still weakened by the waves. As the team begins defeating clones, the mysteries surrounding Android 21 continue to appear. She seems to lose some control over her emotions when near defeated clones. When they reach West City, 21 again begins to lose control, expressing a desire to feed on the clones. 21. I can't take it! I need to feed a strong! And as her psyche continues to deteriorate, Krillin arrives to meet up with Android 18. Seemingly having lost her sense of self completely, 21 orders 18 to fight with Krillin, and says that if she doesn't, then 21 will fight Krillin herself. This is our first hint at 21's power. Android 16 and 17 warn that if 21 is allowed to fight Krillin, he'll die. Let Krillin fight 21 when she's like this. 18. You need to fight with Krillin now. If you don't, 21 will kill him. While we don't know exactly how strong Krillin is during this time, we can assume he's very rusty and hasn't been training. During the future Trunks arc not long after this story, Krillin's arm is grazed by a normal bullet during his work as a police officer, and 18 even scolds him for being so Damn. weak. Your father doesn't have time to play right now. He can't do much of anything because he got hurt by some teeny weeny bank robbers. <gasps> On top of this, the waves are still affecting Krillin, suppressing his power further. However, they also affect 21, and there's no evidence that they affect people at different rates, so we can disregard them for now. With this in mind, the last real feat we saw from Krillin was taking out a bunch of Frieza Force soldiers when he was also very rusty. So we can assume at least that 21 could easily do this as well. After the fight between Krillin and 18, which 18 handily wins, 21 again expresses her desire to feed, this time on Krillin. Eventually, this outburst proves too much and 21 passes out, leaving the other androids to bring her back to the lab, where Android 16 explains a bit more about 21 and her backstory. Per 16's exposition, we learn that Android 21 is an android created by the combined DNA of great warriors, very similar to Cell. This combination of DNA, like Cell, includes parts from Goku, Frieza, Piccolo, and unlike Cell, even includes pieces from Majins, like Kid Buu. 16 also states that 21 is stronger than Cell ever was, and that she has more potential than Cell ever had. She's even stronger than Cell ever was. Even stronger than Cell. Cell evolved through fighting Goku eventually becoming stronger than the cell we knew. But 21 is completely different. She already has more potential than cell ever possessed. This second hint at 21's power is much more revealing. Stronger than cell ever was would put her above Super Perfect Cell, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, and everyone else during the Cell Saga. But even this is nothing compared to the following statement that 21 has far more potential than cell ever did. 
Both Cell and 21 were built in part from the cells of Frieza, a character who, in only 4 months, climbed from the power of a Namek Saga Super Saiyan Goku to a Super Saiyan Blue level of strength, and not long after that, a 10 year stay in the time slowed dimension brought him above true Ultra Instinct Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta, two of the strongest fighters we'd ever seen up to that point. With all this in mind, we now know that Android 21 is at least stronger than Cell, and has the highest potential of anyone in Dragon Ball. 16 also elaborates on some of the other mysteries behind 21, her urge to feed stemming from certain cells in her body, likely those taken from Kid Buu. These cells go berserk and cause 21 to split her personality, very similar to the creation of Evil Buu in Z. As the team continues on wiping out the clones, they're encountered by Cell. I finally found Learning that before 21 had gotten her other half under control, She'd use the Dragon Balls to wish back all of the villains that Goku and the other Z fighters had defeated, including the likes of Nappa, Frieza, and Cell. Cell exclaims that, despite the wave suppression, he's regained his full power and engages the androids in a fight. With 21 stepping up to help the others and activating her true Majin form, the four of them barely manage to scrape out a win, showing that 21 and the others are still heavily suppressed. However, as Cell falls, 21's urges return, and this time they overcome her. No! 21! Damn it! We need to stop her! What are you doing? 16! I'm just keeping my promise. Shut up! Get out of my way! As 16 attempts to stop 21 from feeding on Cell, he turns on him and destroys him with one large energy ball. Please protect 21's heart. Sixteen! The grief from this event, having in a way killed her own son, tears Android 21 in two, separating her good and evil halves. The evil 21, now fully in control of her own body, then turns Cell into a donut and devours him in front of the others, increasing her power exponentially. It's here we learn the secret to 21's incredible potential. While she can grow through training like anyone else, she also has the ability to absorb others' powers into her own through consuming them, much like Super Buu. Shrugging off a blast from her good half, Evil 21 then flies off, leaving the heroes to chase after her, eventually coming face to face again at one of their secret laboratories. Here, Evil 21 finds the wave machine and consumes it, nullifying both the waves and the power suppression everyone has been affected by. We learn here that the waves are Evil 21's attempt to paralyze Earth's fighters, so she could consume them one by one, without trouble and increase her power. However, her plan backfired, and the power suppression allowed the good 21 to surface for long enough to take back control of the shared body. Suddenly, as 21 moves to finish off the androids, Goku and Krillin arrive to save the day. Goku then uses instant transmission to acquire senzu beans for the others. <laughs> Disappeared? Instead of fighting Goku, Evil 21 disappears using instant transmission, showing her ability to copy techniques instantly at a glance, the same way Majin Buu could. This has frightening implications on 21's power, as in Super, many more powerful techniques have been introduced for 21 to copy, including Ultra Instinct, the technique not the transformation, Spirit Fission, or even Hakai, and those she can't copy just by watching, she could obtain through consumption. A short time later, as all the Z fighters have gathered, it's revealed that 21 has been consuming the remaining clones to boost her power. Following suit, the new team aims to eliminate as many clones as possible before 21 can consume them, and in doing so, Goku exclaims that he feels he's regained his full power, only to be told by Vegeta that, even at full power, as post-hit fight Goku, they wouldn't be enough to take down 21. It'll only restore your original power, but new power is the only way we're going to win this! 
This statement skyrockets Evil 21's power ranking from stronger than Cell to above Super Saiyan Goku with Kaioken times 10, as this is what he used to fight Hit with during the Universe 6 tournament not long before this. As the last clones are cleared from Earth, the team confronts 21, leading her to the world of the Kais for their final battle, to avoid destroying the Earth in the process. The androids, along with all the other Z fighters, take on 21 and, in a combined final battle, bring her to a knee. Everyone is beat up and has taken heavy damage, but Evil 21 is in better shape due to her incredible regenerative ability, another power offered to her by her Majin cells. <sighs> no need to rush things. I'll make sure I eat every last one of you. What in the... But she was all beat up just a minute ago. Her healing abilities are off the charts. We need to destroy every last cell of her, or she'll just keep coming back. She stands, ready to finish off the heroes as they resort to a final spirit bomb, ready to destroy her entirely, negating her regeneration. When the spirit bomb is finally readied and thrown at Evil 21, she's able to hold it back. Krillin exclaims that there's nothing they can do as they've all used up the entirety of their power. <laughs> resulting in the good 21 sacrificing herself, tackling evil 21 and allowing the spirit bomb to connect and finish them both off. I interpret Krillin's statement as saying with all the heroes going 100%, they still couldn't beat 21, since we know that Android 17 and 18 both have an infinite source of power and wouldn't run out like the rest. So interpreting this statement as them just being tired or out of energy wouldn't make much sense. But while this final battle is a great spectacle, what does it mean for the strength of Android 21? The final confrontation of Android 21's story is a battle between Dragon Ball's strongest heroes and the evil Majin 21. While the powers of fighters like Krillin or Piccolo might not add much to the fight, Goku and Vegeta are joined by a good 21 that, as we learned earlier, is at least more powerful than Super Perfect Cell, and a post-Universe 6 Android 17. A 17 who, not long after this, before the Tournament of Power, held his own against Goku in his Super Saiyan Blue form, where Goku pointed out that 17 appeared to be holding back. It still feels like you're holding back on me. <laughs> That's funny. I was just about to say the same thing about you. This 17 would go on to defeat some of the most powerful foes in the multiverse during the Tournament of Power. At this point, it's reasonable to believe that his powers rival Goku and Vegeta. All seven of these fighters together were unable to take down the evil Android 21 for good. Vegeta with Blue, Goku with Blue Kaioken x 10, and 17 who rivals the Saiyans. During the following Future Trunks saga, Blue Goku with Kaioken x 10 manages to briefly overpower a few Zamasu. As 21 beats a Goku with access to this power, alongside the other heroes, she probably sits somewhere around Fuse Zamasu in terms of power, likely between him and Vegito Blue of the same time period. This would make 21 the strongest power in the universe during this time. But not only is she powerful, she also has incredible hacks abilities by virtue of her Majin cells. Twenty One has an arsenal of extremely powerful abilities, the most powerful of these, those granted to her by the Majin cells used to create her. She has a magical body, granting her incredible regeneration, meaning she has to be completely erased to prevent her from restoring herself. On top of this, as we've learned, she retains the ability to copy techniques at a glance like Majin Buu, and use those techniques instantly. And finally, the ability to absorb other fighters to increase her own power level drastically. So what does this mean for Twenty One's potential ranking in the Dragon Ball universe, and where does she stack up? Possibly one of the most interesting matchups for Android 21, Zamasu's wish to be immortal makes her one of the only characters capable of handling him. As I established earlier, 21 should be stronger than Fuse Zamasu from the start, given that she's stronger than both Goku and Vegeta from around the same time. And toward the end of their arc in the manga, perfected blue Goku was able to give Zamasu the hands, and in the anime, Goku with blue Kaioken was able to overpower him briefly as well. 21 also should be able to keep up with Zamasu's immortality with her own near infinite regenerative ability. Not only this, but 21 is uniquely equipped to take down Zamasu for good without needing to bring in Zeno to erase the timeline. 
As seen in the Boo arc, Kid Boo was able to absorb many Kais and gain their power. And while Zamasu can't be killed, he can still be turned into candy and absorbed in the same way. It's unclear if Vegito had some hacks ability that allowed him to function normally while his form was changed into a candy ball, or if it's just a product of being considerably stronger than whoever used it on you. But either way, 21 should easily be able to handle it, as she's much stronger or at least near the same strength as Zamasu. This means Zamasu is sealed away, much like the Elder Kai, and not killed, though his immortality would have no effect. Not to mention, this would also make him an infinite source of power for 21, as his body would never decay and his powers would never decrease. This solves the problem of Zamasu's immortality without having to completely erase the timeline, and also gives 21 a hearty power boost in the process. Hip is a fan favorite character from Dragon Ball Super. He makes his debut battling against Goku during the Universe 6 tournament. In the anime, drawing out Goku's new technique, the Super Saiyan Blue with a Kaioken times 10. Over the course of this fight, Hit improves his time skip ability to overpower Goku, and multiple times refuses to finish off Goku to keep the fight going, in the end revealing that to not kill Goku, he had to hold back during the fight. Not only did 21 also beat a Goku capable of the same blue Kaioken technique, she held her own against him alongside allies that were near his same strength. It's also hinted that the time skip is not an ability unique to Hit, meaning it can be copied by Android 21. Granted, I've only heard rumors of the ability to manipulate time, but apparently there are few beings out in the various universes who can perform this skip. Other than the time skip, Hit's only advantage is his keen eye for targeting opponents' weak points, which, due to Android 21's unique magical body, she wouldn't have. With both of these advantages taken away, 21 would easily sweep Hit with no difficulty. Because I'm not done improving yet. <laughs> Frieza, during this time, is in the process of his image training in Hell, growing stronger to perfect his golden form. During the ROF arc, Golden Frieza was equally matched with Super Saiyan Blue. Later, during the Universe Survival Saga, not long before the Tournament of Power, Goku and Frieza spar and are declared equal by Beerus, though Goku didn't use his Kaioken technique. By virtue of 21's feet versus Goku, Vegeta, and 17, 21 should easily handle Golden Frieza, even with his strength at the start of Zeno's Tournament of Power. And now for the sake of your feeble little mind, we can keep the name simple as well. We'll call this Golden Freezer. Had Android 21 merged back with her good side and competed in the Tournament of Power, how would she stack up against the rest of the universe's strongest fighters? The unfortunate part of her performance during the tournament would be the no-killing rule, as she wouldn't be able to absorb more power during the fight. However, if she could prove the ability to spit fighters back out, like Super Boo was forced to after eating Vegito, she would be able to consume power to her heart's content, and then, provided she had at least one ally left, take a dive off the stage at the end to take them all out. As 21 stands during her arc in DBFZ, she would stand no chance against Jiren because of his overwhelming strength. However, if 21 was allowed to consume opponents, it's possible she would be able to defeat Jiren. Consuming enemies like the Universe 6 Saiyans or Hit would skyrocket her power. Watching Goku fight with Jiren would also allow her to copy the Kaioken technique to multiply her power further. Finally, 21 could also copy the Ultra Instinct technique from Goku, and possibly the transformation due to her Saiyan cells, as well as the power of destruction from Top. If all of these went according to plan, Android 21 would have been able to easily hold her own or even overpower Jiren. However, if these things didn't happen, or consuming her opponent was deemed not allowed, 21 would fall to Jiren pitifully, as during her arc she manages to block the spirit bomb, but only to hold it in place, whereas Jiren was able to stop it with just his glare, and easily overpower Goku, throwing it back at him.
Coming past the Tournament of Power, Android 21 would have a special place during the battle against Moro. Instead of bringing the Daikaio to fight against Moro, Android 21 could have taken his place as her body is built in part from Boo's same magical cells, meaning that Moro's power absorption technique wouldn't work on her either. Initially, Boo puts up a good fight on Nunamic, driving Moro back and giving him a thorough thrashing. Moro only escapes due to the wish restoring him his full magical power. After this, Moro begins to overpower the Daikaio. By copying the Ultra Instinct technique from Maris or Kaioken from Goku, Android 21 would easily be able to handle even a full magical power Moro. Vegeta states that either he or Goku individually could handle Moro with her full power in Super Saiyan Blue. Though Goku and Vegeta are much stronger now in Blue than in the future Trunks arc, an Ultra Instinct or Kaioken Android 21 would be stronger than both of them based on where we placed her earlier. She could even replace the Dai Kaio's power sealing technique with her own power absorption, granting herself all of the power Moro has accumulated. With 21's near-infinite potential due to Frieza and overpowered Majin abilities from Boo, she is easily the strongest non-fused character in the series during her time. Had she persisted with the heroes, she would only grow stronger, even if she wasn't able to consume foes to gain their power. If 21 were to become fully canonized, she would definitely need to be toned down a bit, because as we can see, the future arcs become a bit too easy with her involved. Though if she were introduced as a villain, it may be cool to see a newly reached god Gotenks or something take her down during the new superhero arc, which is directly connected to her due to her being based on the grandmother of Dr. Hedo, a main catalyst for the arc. Whatever the reason, hopefully we can see 21 become canon, or even have her own arc during the story, but for now, we can at least enjoy the easter eggs. <laughs>